Hey guys, welcome back to Post Planned. I had some more stuff I wanted to show off, so here we are. Gonna start at the bottom of the fort today. Uh, here we've got the first layer of the caverns, where we've dug out a nice square. Fancy. And here we've got some cage traps, and some steps going up. Up these steps is our mine, and then soon we will see some actual changes to the fort. Now we do have one more body in our tombs, and a few more slabs, because uh, visitors don't follow instructions when you have areas designated as off-limits. So for example, if you have an area where there's a waterfall that sweeps people away and they fall and break all their arms and legs and their spine when they hit the bottom, and you have that as off-limits for your dwarves, visitors will still come by and go, hey, this seems like a good place to cross and get swept off and get all their arms broken and their legs broken and their spines busted, usually they drown. So we wind up having to engrave slabs for these idiots to memorialize some other assholes that don't even live here, uh, just so they don't haunt us, because the one corpse that we have added, that's right, I forgot that this is how they died, it was a, a ghost disemboweled them. Fucking ghosts in my fort, man. And then you'll see the dining area hasn't been touched much at all. We've doubled our kitchen and stills. Oh, do I have kitchens there? Oh. I swapped them around. Okay, well, I'm just... Whatever, it doesn't matter. The food stockpile's there. I thought I had stills on one side and kitchens on the other. But apparently I swapped it up. Above that, we have our new level for the residential district. This one's going to be for fancy folks. Bigger living areas that are going to give Pablo a stroke. Look at that, look at that 5x5, five five. and I don't care who gets this. It can be anybody. And there's probably going to be platinum furniture everywhere, and I might even customize them for whoever winds up moving in. Who knows, it's going to be lavish, and the dwarves are going to love it. But just about everybody who I talk to about Dwarf Fortress is going to hate it. Because it's not, you know, efficient or whatever. Anyway, above that is the old residential area, and... This is, I think, the new dugout and smooth zone. All the pores are going to be living here now. We've still got our temple to Sobir, praise and freedom. And we've got two statues still, you know, good old statues. We've got some pictures. Let's actually look at them because I don't think I've looked at them before. Oh, excuse me. Six-sided, long six-sided prisms. That's cool. Let's see, image of a forgotten beast. That's the local government. Image of a bloodthorn. That's the local civilization. Image of a garlic plant. Shut up, animals. Jesus. Image of grates. That's great. And an image of leather armor. Awesome. So we've also got these two artifacts in here that we can look at, too. So they're going to make our dwarves happy. This is a turkey bone amulet. All mm. This is a turkey bone amulet. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of turkey bone and square cut white jades. On the image is an image of Eshton, Leap Paddle, the dwarf, and dwarves in Willow. Ashton Leap Paddled is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the appointment of the dwarf Ashton Leap Paddle to the position of diplomat of the Sly Blockade N1. That's a neat amulet. And then Thosbutakas is the other thing. And that's a claystone mechanisms. All craft dwarf ships of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangular claystone cabochons, decorated with cave fish leather, and encircled with bands of round magnetite cabochons. So, nothing, nothing too fancy. Uh, and then we got the platinum chests with, a, uh, oh, yeah, the, the fucking crazy instruments, the fucking hand organs and hand pianos. We've got our jail that's still gone unused, because we don't have crime here. We love freedom, and we love the law. And down here we have a little extension that we're smoothing out right now. And those are stairs that are going to lead us to the surface and the topic of today's episode. The law. I'm starting to see a smiley face right now that I didn't notice before, and that's a shame. But I think when we left off last time, we just had the one layer of the chalk block walls, and that was it. So I've expanded that. The wall that's defending the main entrance here now is uh, significantly taller, too. So we'll, you know, we'll cover that a little bit. But we've got the main entrance with our copper bridge and a platinum road. And a platinum road leading out. And we've got this outer wall here that is connected by these cop bridges to the inner wall that we can flip up with these levers here. 
to separate the inner and outer walls. And then the outer wall is going to have a whole bunch of different little guard towers topped with these fortifications here. And they're going to be set up to isolate different uh, and they're going to be set up to isolate different sections of the wall and have archer guys be able to fire on idiots from them. So eventually the plan is to have this outer wall stretch all the way to the north here and have a big ass main gate somewhere down here. And then yeah, hopefully we'll have a great wall. But I have one problem, this douchebag. So originally I'd wanted to wait until I finished the wall before I showed you guys, you know, the finished product because I wanted it to be a big ass grand reveal. And then I wanted the next time I showed it off to be a siege to have it, you know, actually be showing off the defenses in the works and see how it went. Unfortunately for me, this Hydra decided to show up now before I finished off the southern end. And uh, we've got dudes currently working. So I've activated burrows, I've got my military ready, and fortunately for us, there is a caravan that is just leaving. So hopefully, if the Hydra is a little bit friendly... Hmm, I don't like that. That wasn't a good omen. But if the Hydra is a little friendly, it'll kill these guys, and we'll be able to just grab some of the shit we traded for, you know, their whole stockpile of whatever they had on them. I didn't look. I just give them a whole bunch of shit and take everything they have. Because we're rich like that. So right now the orders as they stand are this squad who was off duty and sitting at home drinking and shit is going to be going onto this road here. Then we've got this other primary melee squad who's just starting to get filled out now. But they were training so they're armed up and ready to go. We've got the captain of the guard and then his training partner. I haven't really expanded upon them yet. These two, these two don't mind fighting constantly. They're pretty badass. And then we've got our conscripts, who are going to be the Marks Dwarves. And while all the melee squads are here, the ranged squads are going to be up here and here, hopefully providing cover should the Hydra, you know, get too close. Now, there's always a chance that... The Hydra gets wrecked, or that my vent comes on while I'm in the middle of a sentence. So while the vent was on, I had the genius realization that I should cancel these jobs that were here because I've got idiots right around the corner. Oh, I've got... right, that's why I was digging out the wall, there's an idiot stuck in there. Well, <laughs> he's probably in the safest place in the fort right now. Uh, that guy doesn't know how lucky he just got. <laughs> the fuck was your name? <laughs> Aloth Bouchet. Mm -hmm. You got Shat in your name, buddy. Oh, let's get this started and see how this goes, because I'm excited to see if I get owned by a Hydra. Oh shit, there's other jobs going on. Oh, there are jobs that are out here. Oh shit, all these. Oh, they can go. They can go over the bridge. So these guys are fine. So that's one of the benefits of this is while this mayhem is going on down here, this job actually isn't that interrupted. Um, they might be shitting themselves seeing them, but uh, yeah, otherwise it shouldn't be that bad. Anyway, back to the fight. Who the hell? Domas, what the fuck are you doing? Alright, well, what the plan was, was I was going to just play things out and then just read the combat log afterwards, but uh, let's just cover what's been going on real quick with the Hydra. <laughs> it's been, you know, murdering everybody. Okay, the Mark have been doing work. Been seeing the crossbow bolts flying in. I bet Hydra's been fucking dudes up, though. I'm going to have to bury all these idiots. Well, at least we're going to get all that free shit. There we go. Yeah, those archers are hitting it next, dude. That's some good stuff. Alright, so what do we got here? Nice. Alright, so Hydra's kind of fucked up now. It looks like that pipe is fucking this thing up. Yeah, goddamn. Good job, caravan guard. We fucking did it. Holy shit. Well, I can't believe we pulled that off. Because I've never had good luck with dwarves uh, killing anything. 
And we got most of our loot back. <laughs> oh, we did lose that bookbinder, though, that dumbass. All right, now I'll actually go through the logs and see what happened. Let's check out this Hydra's combat log. All right, that was the mace dwarf that was uh, guarding the caravan. Bit him right in the head. Jesus Christ. Well, that pike dwarf. Now, that's the pike dwarf that's still alive right there, because that's the only pike dwarf that we've had on the map. Deflecting with those bismuth bronze armors. All right. Oh, he's got some nice steel, too. Oh, so he's decked. Nice. And then the crossbow bolts were flying in. I saw them doing some work. Mace Dwarf getting bashed in the brain. That dude got fucked up. But yeah, there you go. Good looking. Boo, boo, boo. Spilling my words just like those guts were getting spilled. Let's see. And there's that Pike Dwarf going back at it. That Mace Dwarf's getting fucked up, though. Getting shook around. And yeah, the Hydra just tore that one Mace Dwarf apart. That Pike Dwarf was there the whole time. And that's a lot of armor deflecting. That's impressive as shit. It's a shame that their weapon's shitty. Now there goes some more bolts actually making contact. Another neck shot, right front foot. That Hydra could not land hits on anybody who actually had fucking skill dodging, could it? Oh, there we go. That's what did it in. Fuck. N <laughs> oh, there we go. That's what did it in. Fucking nice. A steel bolt to the rear leg. Fracturing the bone. Tore a tendon. Hydra falls over. That's that's the beginning of the end there. Yeah, Pike Dwarf stabbing it a bunch. Yeah, bashing its head in. This is when the bookbinder jumped in and started beating it. <laughs> Another iron bolt to a neck. Bookbinder punching the Hydra. God, I wish that dude survived. That guy deserved it. That nerd, that nerd went in. Yeah, this fucking big brain idiot was just swinging at him. With hands and feet. That Pike Dwarf just didn't stop. Christ. I think this is when, yeah, our Mace Dwarf showed up. So that would be Iteb. So our first military dwarf to show up to this situation was Iteb. Alright, nice. He is a fairly skilled warrior. Ah, and then the Hydra grabs the book binder. Ooh. Ooh, that's not a good combo. So, grab the left rear leg, bit off the left upper arm, oh, a bit through the lower body, Jesus. Tore through the right foot, clawed through the legs, god damn. Oh, pulled the left knee, tore off the right foot, bit through the spleen, Christ. Or, so beer. That's what I meant. Why so beer? Alright, then while that motherfucker is on the ground, our sword dwarf shows up, stabs it in the guts. Then, uh, yeah, the Hydra, while vomiting, 
<laughs> opens up the bookbinder's guts. So Sprang Puke just hired your vomit everywhere out of all seven heads shaking around this poor fucking bookbinder whose guts are now pouring out and getting just filled with vomit. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> what a way to go. Yeah, then the mash, mash dwarf. Yeah, was mashing. Mashing brains. Alright, yeah, and then everybody just went in on this Hydra, stabbed the shit out of it. Yeah, it looks like everything went pretty well. So we followed it in there. There was a lot of support from the crossbows in the back here. At least those who managed to equip themselves. I think that's part of the reason why, uh, <laughs> why there wasn't too much fire coming in. Oh no, they're equipped. Okay. It's just not showing on them. All right. Well, that's good then. Don't mind the construction materials of those crossbows. So there it is, the first defense of our little barrier here that we're building up. Went very well. We only lost one dude who ran out there on his own. Uh, everyone else is doing pretty good. Nobody else got injured on our side of things anyway. This guy's just sad because he's a bitch. But other than that one dude and then all those merchants getting marked and us getting free ship from it, which is a good thing, you know, can't say that went too poorly. So I'm going to drop all these guys' orders, let them go home, continue their regular schedule, and I'll let you guys continue your regular schedules. And next time something interesting starts happening with this fort, or I get an idea to build something fun, I'll pop it back up here for you. So uh, until then, you know, see you later, idiot.